What's up, everybody? It's once again me, Jason Cruz, here with another episode of The Legal Submission. And in this episode of The Legal Submission, we get to take a look at a lawsuit filed in the state of Pennsylvania, in specifically Philadelphia, related to professional wrestlers that are filing a lawsuit against the new or newer All Elite Wrestling. And in the lawsuit, uh, three performers, uh, the Tate brothers, uh, known mainly as the boys in Ring of Honor, and uh, and a, a TV personality talent Kevin Kelly, filing lawsuit against uh, All Elite Wrestling, claiming among other things that they uh, All Elite Wrestling breached the contract that they had with the company as well as alleging that they are misclassified as independent contractors when in fact they should be employees. Now to give a little background this isn't the first time a, a wrestler has filed lawsuits against a, a company for claiming that they were employees rather than uh, independent contractors. Now the b big difference between independent contractors and uh, employees in this context, and what, what's most important here when determining the differences between independent contractors and employees is that independent contractors are just that. They're independent. So they can uh, supposedly work for any company they wish to work for at any time they wish to work for. Employees, on the other hand, are bound by their employer. So uh, the one big thing, though, that um, mainly World Wrestling Entertainment, World Wrestling Federation back in the day, wanted is to have independent contractors rather than employees because the if they were classified as employees, uh, the companies like WWF and, or in this lawsuit All Elite Wrestling would have to pay for benefits such as uh, Medicare, uh, insurance, uh, life insurance, uh, social security, all of those things that uh, employers have to do for their employees. But if they were in, classified as independent contractors, none of that would actually happen. Now, uh, one of the other things is that uh, being an employee would subject the employer to ensure that they are following standards such as OSHA, workplace issues. As an employee, they would be subject to things such as Social Security, Medicare, protection under the Fair Labor Standards Act, and other anti-discrimination laws. Also, uh, they would have to uh, give time for uh, women, women talent if they have uh, have uh, have children and need to go out on leave. Uh, they, they that would open up the employer to a lot of these types of things that they would have to abide by: anti-harassment, anti-discrimination laws that they could be subject to if uh, they had employees. Now, the lawsuit uh, claims specifically that. The Tate brothers and Kevin Kelly were released uh, as a result of budget cuts, and it uh, it, uh, it indicated that that was the reason why they were let go. Uh, however, um, Tony Khan, on I believe on a podcast or a, a online interview, indicated that the boys had not shown up to certain uh, certain dates that they were assigned to for either ROH or All Elite Wrestling. All Elite Wrestling owns Ring of Honor ROH at this particular time. So uh, the Tate brothers are claiming, first of all, that that is not true. That in fact, that they were uh, available and that Khan was lying. So this becomes actually a part of the, a defamation lawsuit that is also caked into this, this complaint. Uh, first things first, uh, well not first things first, but the complaint indicates that in the talent agreement signed by uh, Kevin Kelly and the Tate brothers, there was an arbitration clause. 
Now, we've talked about arbitration clauses in the past, in the UFC, uh, UFC case, there's a, uh, in the Johnson Zufa antitrust lawsuit, there's uh, issues with arbitration clauses. Uh, there uh, are ish the one thing with the arbitration clause is that if you if you have a dispute about the agreement that you've entered into you must go into a mandatory arbitration in which an arbitrator will determine the fate of your dispute rather than go to a court file a lawsuit go before a judge, potentially have a jury trial and have someone decide for you what, what the damages are in your dispute, if any. So basically, the argument here related to the arbitration clause is that it was un unconscionable and should not be enforced simply because it was at a t on a take it or leave it basis. It wasn't pointed out to the plaintiffs. There was no opportunity to negotiate arbitration agreements. None of the plaintiffs were familiar with arbitration clauses. The arbitration location was to be held in Florida, whereas the resident, there were residents of Pennsylvania and Tennessee. They were, our agreements were signed in states other than Florida. Uh, a, a lot of a litany of uh, issues with arbitration agreement. Now, the question be, will be whether the arbitration agreement should prevail over this dispute. Now, from the, All Elite Wrestling has not filed an answer or responded to this particular lawsuit yet. The lawsuit was filed, I believe, last week. Let's look at September. Oh, goodness. Sept, I believe September 6th. Uh, if Oh, I'm sorry, August 30th. It was filed August 30th, but so AEW has at least 20, 30 days to respond here to the lawsuit. I don't think they will respond to in, in the form of an answer. I believe that what they'll probably do, um, which we'll get down the road on this, is that they will likely try to move this case to arbitration. And so that'll be the first uh, hurdle for the plaintiffs. So the question about the arbitration clause, whether it was a take it or leave it, whether it was point, whether pointed at, out to the person signing it, it really is subjective and we are not privy to what those things are. What, what went on between uh, the, the plaintiffs and AEW, how AEW conducts their talent agreements, do they just uh, hold the signing page in front of them? Do they let them have time to look over the contract before signing or do they make them sign it before they actually go out there and perform? That's that's the question whether they make them sign it before they get paid. That's another question. Uh, usually as we've seen, uh, as we've talked about, arbitration agreements are pretty hard and fast. It's hard to avoid arbitration uh, if there's an arbitration clause in most of these contractual agreements. The policy behind that usually relates to the fact that they, uh, the uh, parties are able to streamline litigation or lit litigation disputes, lit uh, disputes in general. There is no litigation in the court system because that can be a costly issue. Now we've gone back and forth about arbitration agreements, right? Uh, in the uh, Cajun Johnson case, in the UFC antitrust case, we, th we dis we've talked about arbitration clauses and whether or not those are viable, whether or not they should be uh, adhered to. And in this case, a, the uh, first hurdle, I believe, for the plaintiffs is the fact that they have to uh, beat this arbitration clause if they want to keep the case in uh, court. Now, uh, as far as the talent agreements go, a lot of this complaint was uh, redacted, so we can't tell what the uh, agreements indicated, but obviously we, we know, at least from the claims, that there was an arbitration agreement. Secondly, uh, AEW talent are considered uh, employees or independent contractors. We 
if you re recall the Le Leslie Smith case in the UFC, she took a case to the NLRB, and, uh, and that case was about to be litigated upon the facts and then was stopped. Uh, you might recall the Trump administration was in power at the particular point, and you can infer that they did not want to have that case to go forward before the NR NLRB panel and determine whether or not uh, MMA fighters were uh, were employees rather than independent contractors. Now, there is a litany of factors that go into whether or not the uh, worker is an independent contractor versus an employee. Uh, a lot of the issues deal with control of the employee over the worker, whether they, they control the means of, of their job and things of that nature. So one of the one of the issues that come up and is a viable argument on the part of the plaintiffs is that AEW pro provided the talent the opportunity to work independent shows. This is more prevalent than you see in WWE. WWE performers rarely do other shows unless it is agreed to between WWE and the other promotion. That had usually not happened, as we've seen of late. It's starting to um, starting to um, uh, uh, loosen up a little bit, but. AEW uh, performers do do a lot of other independent dates. They do a lot of promo other promotions across the uh, U.S. to earn a lot of money, earn more money than they they are making with AEW. Um, so you know, from that perspective, they AEW grants that uh, opportunity. However, they do have to uh, clear it through All Elite Wrestling prior to taking the date. So there is a little bit of control over, over the worker at, uh, from that aspect. Uh, it, it still will be an issue uh, that will be hard fought between the parties if this case actually gets to the merits. merits. Now, uh, we also go to a very interesting defamation case. So uh, both um, the Tate brothers and uh, Kevin Kelly have uh, defamation, uh, false light uh, causes of action in this case. Now for various, for different reasons. As I alluded to, the Tate brothers had the issue with Tony Khan claiming that they didn't show up for, for dates that they were supposed to go to. That's more of a factual issue, and I'm not quite sure if it gives rise to a defamatory uh, nature. Although, you know, it, uh, if Khan says that these guys are no-showing, uh, it could be damaging to, their re to the, the wrestler's reputation with other promoters, things of that nature. Now, the Kevin Kelly one is the one I wanted to get to because it's very interesting and a little uh, odd. Ian Riccoboni is also a television analyst for AEW or Ring of Honor, and the specific cause of action by Kevin Kelly is against Riccoboni and AEW since AEW uh, hired Riccoboni for the work uh, as a as an AEW uh, commentator or Ring of Honor commentator, but. I'll just read it. On or about June 12, 2023, plaintiff Foot, Kevin Kelly, actually his last name is Foot, used social media to recommend that people view the movie Sound of Freedom. Sound of Freedom, of course, if you remember, was a movie that was uh, controversial in that it told the story of human trafficking, although it came from it from a very more political, made-up view. Ian Riccoboni on August 31st, 2023, made the following statement on uh, Discord. Uh, Riccoboni stated, also had no idea he was, he being uh, Kevin Kelly, was going to promote 
QAnon movies or else I might have made a different suggestion. I suppose that his name was always in the mix, but that QAnon stuff breaks my heart a little bit. That was the issue with that movie because it, it, it allegedly, allegedly pushed themes that are supported by the controversial group QAnon. Controversial. Uh, QAnon, as you know, is a right-wing conspiracy group that spreads misinformation and disinformation. Uh, uh, if you look up, up on Wikipedia, which the plaintiffs did in their uh, lawsuit. So, Kelly is suing Rick and Bonnie for saying this stuff on social media. Now that, in and of itself, is a whole other issue uh, that, you, that law students could sink their teeth in if it was a law school uh, test because uh, you know there's an implication that this movie is associated with QAnon there is the uh, inference that QAnon is, con is, not, is a conspiracy group and not, uh, not uh, seen in a good light in most uh, most uh, realms of U.S. culture. The issue being, uh, since this occurred on social media, not really through AEW, is AEW liable for what Riccoboni said? And, and also, Riccoboni, according to AEW, is an independent contractor, so should they even be liable for what an independent contractor does? Now, there's a lot of legal theories that go behind that, but I'll just put, leave that there for you until we get, get some response from AEW, but there's, there is that. Uh, so, uh, the, all the other thing I guess you could argue is that AEW has a social media policy, which uh, you might argue uh, Rick Abani or Kevin Kelly did not follow. So the Tate twins um, also had had the uh, Tony Khan issue, but then there's also the um, issues related to uh, potential other revenue streams, uh, torturous interference with a contract or business relationship, um, essentially being that uh, that um, the uh, indicated. It's claiming that Kevin Kelly was a QAnon conspiracy theorist would uh, put him in a fault, bad light and potentially harm him from being hired by other wrestling organizations because of this stigma that he is some conspiracy theorist. So, what is hap going to happen now? Um, there's a lot of thing, a lot of things to unpack in here. There's a lot of a lot of allegations in a big lawsuit. Uh, the first thing, as I indicated, arbitration. Will it go to arbitration or not arbitration? I think AEW uh, will first uh, do that and move the case to arbitration. Next thing it might do, it'll be one and one, one one A. Next thing it might do is it might move the case to uh, Florida. Now this is filed in state court in P Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And the claim is that uh, Tony Khan made some statements in Philadelphia. One of the one of the plaintiffs is from Philadelphia, so therefore, it could stay there. However, in my opinion, one would think that since AEW is a Delaware corporation but does its business, its uh, chief central business out of Florida, Jacksonville, Florida. Um, I believe they do it the same place where the Jaguars are located. But regardless, that's where they are located. So one would think that the case would, should be transferred to where the defendant has its central business. Now we'll see whether or not that, that comes to be, if this actually is a case that goes to the courts rather than being arbitrated, but we shall see. And again, uh, And the one other thing that uh, I failed to mention is that this is seen as a potential class action lawsuit. Now here we are again with another class action lawsuit, potentially. The plaintiffs at, had listed about 260 members that may be affected by the, uh, the contract that mis allegedly misclassifies independent contractors 
and, and stating that they should be employees. Now, there, uh, that lists about, um, about 180 or so wrestlers that are in AEW and ROH, and then maybe another 40 that are non-talent, but are also in the maybe somebody like Kevin Kelly. Uh, maybe, maybe writers are involved as well, um, independent contractors. We, uh, um, they haven't identified that class, but as we can tell from the UFC lawsuit, it might be too little. Not, not no, uh, the uh, numerosity component of a class action lawsuit. Um, you know, there are thousands of UFC fighters affected by the alleged anti-competitive nature of the UFC, but here we only have a little over 200. Um, and as I indicated, the cases may be a fact specific related to what is occurring with the contracts. The independent, the in the, I mean, the independent uh, claim, the independent contractor versus employee claim is, could be viable, but I'm not sure this is the correct forum for that, but we will, we will know soon enough in the next 30 days and see what AEW does. So there's the case. I, I think, uh, I, I think, in the past, we've seen guys like Raven, Demolition Axe, Bill Eady, bring lawsuits claiming that they were employees of, of the WWE, and it turned out, uh, but it turned out in the Raven's case, there was a statute I issue. Bill Eady, he actually, I, I guess it's, it's unknown because the, the case was uh, settled, and if you infer from Eady, who cannot say anything about the lawsuit because I think he signed a, a non-disclosure, he seemed to be fine with the fact that the case was settled and he received money for it. Uh, uh, so we haven't seen a case go to trial, go before court um, as, as, and determine whether or not uh, employees of a wrestling company uh, uh, have been misclassifying its talent. So we, that's an issue that we will see uh, transpire down the road here. Uh, we'll keep tabs on it. It's Jason Cruz with Legal Submission. Have a good day.